Hey, Professor Stiglitz. It's Hi, very nice to meet you. <laughs> of course, that's okay. Uh, things are just uh, yeah. backed up. Yeah, thank oh. you so thank you so very much for being with me here today. Um, yes. uh, I know you're busy, so I'm gonna right away dive into the into the issue. Um, so just recently, uh, you had a comment regarding specifically the United States economy and the interest rate policy there. Uh, as we all know, there's a huge inflation going on all around the world, and uh, more than eight percent inflation is the highest that we have seen for the past 20 years, maybe. But um, you said specifically for United States that if that inflation, if most of it is coming from supply side, and there are a lot of supply side issues in the world right now. There are political tensions uh, between Russia and Ukraine uh, in China, and there are a lot of container difficulties. Finding them is an issue nowadays. So whenever there are supply side issues, uh, increasing rates may not help. It may even hurt. But of course, those comments of yours were predominantly for the United States. And um, unfortunately, uh, Turkish economy, for example, have a completely different setting. And unfortunately, your words regarding the United States economy have been distorted and predominantly presented to the public, such as a Nobel Prize winner is basically supporting Supporting the Turkish economy and the policy and insane monetary policy going on in Turkey. So uh, I just wanted to clarify things up. Uh, of course, uh, for the completeness of this video, we talked before and I gave you some numbers regarding the Turkish economy, but let me give you some info. Uh, Turkey has around $0.8 trillion of GDP. It's less than $1 trillion. And, um, and 90 million people are living in Turkey. And GDP is less than 1% of the world GDP, around 0.6%. Turkey has a huge current account deficit problem. And financing that deficit is a big issue. And uh, Turkey's exports are pretty strong, but in order for Turkey to export stuff, first Turkey needs to import stuff because uh, Turkey doesn't have energy sources and other commodities. So that is why dollar Turkish exchange rate predominantly affects what's going on in Turkey. And unfortunately, dollar Turkish lira increased by a whopping 1,146% in the last 13 years. And in just last one year, it increased 123%. And there are many academic studies in Turkey, uh, for example, one by Professor Hakan Kara. Uh, and uh, he basically shows, he analyzed the pass-through rate from the dollar Turkish lira to the inflation using the Phillips curve. And he showed that a 1% increase in dollar Turkish lira has a 0.3 point effect on the inflation. And that relationship is even stronger recently. So, of course, when we say dollar Turkish lira increased by more than 1,000% in the past 10 years and more than 100% in the last one year, with the pass-through effect, there's a huge effect on inflation. Unfortunately, like one year ago, the policy rate in Turkey was 19%, and inflation was higher than that. Even that rate was low. But then, um, the central bank in Turkey decreased the rates from 19%. To 12 percent and just today before our call they decreased that further to 10.5 percent and inflation of course was only 20 percent one year ago when pulse rate was 19 inflation went up from 20 to 83 percent those are official numbers by the way unofficial numbers are way higher than that but even if we look at the official number uh, the real interest rates are of course negative all around the world but the real interest rates are negative 72 percent so this is by any sense a record within all OECD countries we may even be in world records in terms of negative real rates. So, um, and in the meanwhile, while the central bank was basically decreasing the rates like that, some journalists, some social media trolls took your words, distorted them, and predominantly presented them as if you are supporting that insane monetary policy. And I wanted to talk with you just to clarify things up. That's fine. That's fine. And as you say, you know, different countries have different circumstances. The U.S. has the privilege of being a reserve currency. Uh, the U.S. has had very stable uh, prices for a very long time. That gives us more room for maneuver. Uh, I've been worried about the negative real interest rates in the United States, uh, but they're uh, minus uh, 5%, 4%. Uh, I can tell you, if they were minus 70%, uh, what little gray hair I have would be uh, falling out. Falling out, right, yeah. yeah talk with you just to clarify things up. That's fine. And as you say, you know, different countries have different circumstances. The U.S. has the privilege of being a reserve currency. Uh, the U.S. has had very stable uh, prices for a very long time. That gives us more room for maneuver. Uh, I've been worried about the negative real interest rates in the United States, uh, but they're uh, minus uh, 5%, 4%. Uh, I can tell you, if they were minus 70%, uh, what little gray hair I have would be uh, falling out. Falling out, right, yeah. yeah.
it, it uh, distorts the capital markets enormously. So uh, the fundamental thing that I've argued is that the reason that we can be fairly sure that supply is driving what is happening in the United States is that our inflation rate is just average among the advanced countries. So while we had a larger fiscal stimulus, our interest rates were the same as other countries, uh, our inflation rate is just average. In our analysis, if it had turned out that our inflation rate was higher than other countries, we would be able, we would not be able to make that argument. We would say something is going on in Absolutely. the U.S. that is causing that high inflation, and it would be uh, something different that we're doing than other countries. Of course, and it would be excess demand, or as in the case of Turkey, also a very large negative real interest breaks that make it an unattractive place uh, to have money. Yep. And uh, it would also mean that, uh, as you say, exchange rate would be going down. And that exchange rate, as you pointed out, given the pass through, is going to cause enormous inflation. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, so uh, I'm lucky to be able to talk uh, about what is going on in the context of uh, a long history of very, very low inflation. Mm -hmm. And uh, people say anchored inflation. There is a debate about whether they might become slightly unanchored. But right now, inflation expectations in the United States are that it will actually come down. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that inflationary expectations in Turkey are that inflation is going to remain very high. Unfortunately, it's exactly like that. Um, and uh, we all know that inflation is sticky, but you know, in, in the Turkish case, uh, the stickiness is even more stronger than the other countries. So um, yeah, so then um, I think we can uh, clearly conclude that your comments were uh, only for a developed country with an average inflation like United States. But the Turkish case is a very extreme case. It's an emerging market. Uh, it doesn't have a reserve currency. Um, and so, you know, these kind of insane monetary policies like 72% real interest rate would cause uh, further problems. Um, dear Joe, thank you so very much for clarifying things for us. Um, I'm talking in the names of millions of Turkish citizens. Uh, they're being tested under uh, incredible inflation. So uh, glad to hear that, you know, um, you are clearing things up. And um, I hope to see you in one of the conferences. Yeah, yeah and I'm so sorry that my words were misinterpreted. It, it, it happens so often uh, that you're writing for a particular context, a particular situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, behind that goes a lot of analysis. Of Absolutely. The, uh, particular circumstances. Absolutely. Long papers that back uh, those statements, uh, including uh, the fact, as I say, that we have uh, uh, low uh, a history of low inflation and low inflationary expectations. So uh, we can uh, and uh, we can uh, be sure that uh, the inflation here, which is only eight percent, which uh, is nothing, is, is, uh, look at the components is caused by automobiles not being able to be produced because of a ship ship shortage. Uh, gasoline prices. We can identify the sources of that inflation. So we can say with some degree of That's confidence it, right? yep. that that is the source of inflation. Absolutely. And then the question is, if that is the source of inflation, mm -hmm. what do you then, do about that? Then. And uh, the point is, raising interest rates is not going to create more food or more energy or, or more chips. Yep, yep. So, exactly. So that shapes our, our policy framework in responding to inflation. Absolutely. It has to look at the details of the microeconomics. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were in a situation like you're in, with that high pass-through, with the clear relationship between interest rates and exchange rates, it would be very, very worrisome uh, knowing what's going on. And, and uh, you know, uh, one of the things about economics is you make predictions, and then you test those predictions. Absolutely. As you say, you made a prediction that if you uh, led to a devaluation of the exchange rate, it would lead to a uh, increase in inflation. Absolutely. And, and, and so uh, your theories have been validated. Unfortunately.
unfortunately, uh, Turkey became a lab <laughs> environment where we test, you know, uh, let's just decrease the interest rate. Let's just use this insane monetary policy. Let's just crash Turkish lira. And now let's see whether we're not going to have any inflation. But unfortunately, we do. Unfortunately, we do. Uh, your words are actually uh, very interesting. As economists, we like laboratories. Yep. Uh, but unfortunately, the people who are the subject of the experiment uh, often don't do very well. Yeah, absolutely. And, That's and, exactly what's happening. Uh, you know, I, I empathize with the people having to suffer from that insane experiment. Yep, yep. Um, Professor Stiglitz, it's great to meet you. Uh, thank you very much for clarifying things up. And I hope to see you in one of the conferences in the United States again. Uh, so thank you again. Looking forward to it. Thank Bye -bye. you very much.